Hey, everybody, we're here for a new episode of the show that is yet to be named. Today, we're talking James Bond theme songs. Well, are they theme songs? I don't know. We'll talk about that. But I'm here with Johnny Donuts, Triple uh, Seven. Hello, hello. He's not even going to plug himself anymore. His no. stuff will be in the bio. Uh, you check it out. That's the first time now. I ever got it right, what it's called. Um, just <laughs> <laughs> It is, know? actually. It is. Good um, for you. You know, I'm practicing day by day. So we had stipulations um, for this list. We have other James Bond's lists coming, and there's also, like, heavy lockdown stipulations. So for this one, we were going to have zero ties and only one honorable mention allowed. But, I mean, I, I have a tie. <laughs> Um, and I couldn't, your I, list. You can it was unavoidable. It was unavoidable. Yeah. Um, okay. So, I mean, uh, since we're just going to get into the list, I'll start, I'll go. My number five is a tie. Okay. And, um, before I say the names of the things, I'll explain why I have this tie because I was pretty sure what my list was going to be like locked and loaded. Even the honorable mention, I was good. Then I just said, you know what? I'm just going to listen to every bond song today. And I did, I did. and it's fair to say that after hearing this song, I was, like, absolutely blown away, and I was like, there's no way this is not making it to my list, okay? So my number five is a tie between uh, Gladys Knight, License to Kill, mm-hmm. and Diamonds Are Forever by Shirley Bassey. That's a classic, Diamonds Are Forever. Like, it's been sampled how many times? I, like, I think it's... just just her saying Diamonds Are Forever, that's, like, so iconic that... Yeah. It's like it's used in commercials. Other musicians have sampled it. Yeah, I agree. That that is a classic, classic song. My number five. It's more recent. It's Adele's "Skyfall." Her That's vocals are absolutely <clears throat> haunting on the chorus. And I'm I never was a fan of Adele. Not really a big, but just something about that song really sticks to you. And um. Like, you're going to hear this come up a lot as we go through this episode. But that is a very Bond song. Mm -hmm. Like, there's a few songs that we'll talk about later that they don't feel like they're from a James Bond movie. Um, Okay, so that was a good choice. My number four is another instant classic. It's Goldfinger by Shirley Bassey. It is. Shirley Bassey did those first few, and they were all fantastic. Yeah, it's just like... It's another one that's just so iconic and it captures the tone of that movie and it set the tone for Bond songs from that point forward because t- the first two are not really... No. Like, Have you ever heard Johnny Cash's version of, of Dr. No? Is it No, Thunderball. No, I haven't, but I want to now. Johnny I, Cash has a song called I wish I discovered Thunder- that. Before, I think, yeah... But yeah, it was his was the original one, but they went against it. But oh, so he did good. the actual song for the movie, and they, yeah, and they and they because I it. heard uh, Tom Jones is the one that did, did it. Yeah, um, but I heard that they had a they had like seven people do that song, and then they picked which one they were going to keep without yeah. any of the other artists knowing that they did that. Yeah, so everyone so is the Johnny Cash yeah. Thunderball. Wow, just okay, to... that's awesome. Thank you. Um, my number four is. Um, Classic movie, classic song. It's Nobody Does It Better by Carly Simon. I'm not going to lie to you. In the re-listening phase, that that got pretty close. That part where she just sings Nobody Does It Better, it's like, yeah. I was like, okay, this is kind of like iconic. And it, yeah. it's, it works outside of Bond as well. Um, yeah. But it's like a quintessential style Bond song. Especially it's in that from Bond that style. Era. If you know what the Bond style is, then you know. Yeah. Um, okay, so for me, number three, I have View to a Kill, Duran Duran. Had to be on there somewhere, right? Um, my number three is actually The World is Not Enough by Shirley Manson. Um, That's a good choice. Okay, but movie... does it do they do they say that it's by garbage or do they say that no, it's by it's her? Shirley Manson? Okay, okay. And I wasn't I think sure. it's credited as Shirley Manson, but it's you know, if you were grew up in the same 90s, late 90s, early 2000s, like I did, um, I had the biggest crush on Shirley Manson. And that when that song came out, it took a rock musician basically and turned her into like this classic singer that you weren't expecting. And her voice, no, definitely her vocal not. range there is amazing. It's so, something that we, I don't even think we've ever heard vocal range like that from her before. Yeah. 
I don't think we have. No, she always I, used to sing yeah. in a lower tone, and when she hit those high notes in "The World Is Not Enough," it's like it's strange too because buzz. yeah, it kind of has a poppy feel to it. Um, at the like through the the verse, mm-hmm. and then as it gets to the chorus, it turns into like this operatic style, like very like thematic, like James Bond. Back into that and, James Bond, and style. you're like, whoa, you're like, it's like. That happened to me again today listening to it. To yep. be honest with you, I forgot she even did that song. Uh, good choice. Okay, yep. so I'm on number two, and it's like the obvious number two here. Uh, the Living Daylights by AHA. <laughs> your favorite. Uh, not your favorite, but your number well, it's, two. I mean... Uh, again, I went with another classic song, and it's You Only Live Twice, Nancy Sinatra. That's a good, a that's string. A good song. Yeah, that string is iconic. That, da, na, 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 na. I have to agree with that. I don't like the, there's like little parts of it where it has like oh, like a what they think is like an Asian sounding song. Right. And not for like any like reason like that, but it just doesn't sound right to me. It's like comes out of nowhere. Uh, that's like my biggest gripe with that song. But it's yeah. a good song. That it's just for that string fill, that's it's I, I have to say yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, these All are right. good lists, uh, this is, and, and it's different for for a change. It's not. The I think same every things. single one was different. Yeah, we've all had different songs. Okay, so number one, I mean, come on, yeah, there's no way I'm not having Paul McCartney slash Wings. And I at think that's one. our only one that's the same. I mean, live and let die. <laughs> you you listen. You're not going to not have Wings when you have yeah. Wings. You know what I mean? Exactly. You can Paul pick, McCartney over everything. You could pick Paul McCartney. You're not going to pick Paul McCartney. Yeah, come on. It's, yeah, no. Um, it's so iconic in that it it it, ha- it changes like tempo and musical style three different times for each yeah. individual section of the song. So you, it's like slow build up opera, and then it becomes like this huge like action orchestra, song. Like, yeah. Oh my god. It's, it's so and it's so powerful too like it really is it hits you yeah it's it's a fantastic probably one of the greatest songs wings has ever done if not the greatest i mean jet is pretty good but jet is pretty good yeah uh, silly did. little love songs yeah. but hey we can, but, we but can I talk mean, about it, it works, all day it, it works outside of james bond this is probably the yeah. most outside of james like you could listen to this song as a fan of the beatles or paul mccartney and not even know it was from a bond film but it works as a Bond theme too. It does because it has every little thing that a Bond song would have. Yeah. But it also works as like that pop rock song. And like to the point where even Guns N' Roses did a cover of it. I mean, it, you know what's funny too? It also is the turning point of where Bond songs stopped being like slow paced, like love ballads kind of. And became yeah. like, there was like, now there was like a different style it added, i think they added those high hitting horns like yeah. the horn section it became like, more rocky you you had like yeah. a rocky tone which is like it paved the way for like view to a kill and yeah. living daylights i, daylights, I think yeah. to me uh, those songs are just so catchy like living daylights is so good i didn't i yeah. originally had it at number three mm-hmm. and then i ca- i listened to it like four times in a row because i was doing something and it just kept playing like i think i had the thing clicked on uh repeat Right, and it's, I just kept playing, and I was like, "Well, the song is amazing." When you gave okay. me the rules earlier today, it was like I wanted to, I wanted to tie it, and then you said no ties, and then you go and tie everything. You don't know how close uh, that song by Aha of "You to a Kill" came yeah. on. Like, no, uh, "Living Daylight." Living sorry, Daylight. You to, yeah, "Living Daylights" came to getting on the top on the top five there. Like, I it mean, was so it was a, close. It was. It's like, it was a toss up between that and the Adele song, and I had to go with Adele well, just so, because of her vocal styling. Um, we'll go, we'll redo the list after we talk about our honorable mention. So my honorable mention is Skyfall by Adele. And Whereas mine is The Living Daylights. I think the reason I didn't put it on because I'm not a huge Adele fan, but it, that's not really the reason. The reason is I think the songs I picked are for me, songs I prefer as Bond songs. Um, but Adele did a great job of recapturing what a bond song should be which you it echoes that in sam smith's song for specter because yes. it feels very much like a bond song whereas casino royale and uh quantum of solace they don't at all feel like bond songs. i didn't like that quant- that's the jack white and alicia keys okay. one right well hold on we'll talk about this let's redo yeah. our list okay so i'll go I have, at five i have a tie between diamonds are forever and license to kill 
At number four, I have Goldfinger. At number three, I have A View to a Kill. At number two, I have The Living Daylights. And at number one, I have Live and Let Die. Where my number five is Skyfall. Number four is Nobody Does It Better. Number three is The World Is Not Enough. Number two is You Only Live Twice. And number one is Live and Let Die. Okay. So also, before we talk about that too, the the reason that License to Kill Mm -hmm. made my list is because I don't know if you've... uh, if, will you listen to it today it has that what is now um iconic like bond sound like dun, dun, like it, i can't yeah. there's like there's like a whole riff in it between her singing like when there's a pause and that is now like a thing that they use like in goldeneye it's like in this the game it's like dun, like when he's uh in the tunnel thing oh i think you just glitched out on me uh we oh. lost him no no i'm here i'm here Okay, he's back. Whoa, sorry about that, guys. Yeah, I don't want to get too into humming songs and uh, get yeah. banned Getting by copyright YouTube, strikes. Or, but, I mean, if you listen to License to Kill, you know what I'll do? I'm going to take our top five, and I'll put links to all of the songs in the description for both of our lists, and you guys can just go listen to them, and you can decide if you like it or not. But, I mean, yeah. uh, License to Kill, strong song. Um, so what we were talking about with the new movies – I really like the Sam Smith song. I really like the yeah. Adele song. Um, I actually like the Alicia Keys and Jack White song, but not okay. as a Bond song. As a pop song, rock song, a, yeah. It, it works. It kind of has like a, yeah. a fun, like catchy vibe to it, but it's just, maybe if it was just Jack White, I, I don't know. It's, but Alicia I, Keys, it's too Jack White for me. Okay. And the Alicia Keysness of it is what makes it feel kind of Bondy, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. But like, if you just had that song alone and you took her out, I think it would work as just a Jack White song. Um, yeah. But I mean, I really like uh, what's it called? Uh, you know, you know my name, Casino Royale. Uh, Casino, yeah. Chris Cornell. Um, his voice Chris is Cornell, just R.I.P. His voice is so haunting. Um, his vocal range. He never was able to really show it off in any of his like. I guess with either Soundgarden or Audio Slave. Audio Slave a little bit more, but Soundgarden he I was mean, never really in Soundgarden. I mean, not really in Soundgarden because they were kind of stuck in their style of music that they were singing. But in Audio Slave, he has a few songs where they just let him go, like like a stone yeah. when he's just like yeah. belting it, um, and he hits that high that high note yeah. there. Yeah, he can really hold a note too. Surprisingly, like a lot of rock singers can't do like a long note hold. Now, there's a um, there's a few of them that can there's, there's well, obviously can, there's ones but i mean like it's not yeah. like a common type no of the only other th- guy i could think who can do that in rock music is serge tankian from system of a down no he, that guy can scream some notes out there he, he's a very good underrated singer actually yeah um but, okay but back to james bond i mean they yes. should do a system of a down uh james bond song i would love that serge tankian singing a james bond song i'd, I'd love to hear that <laughs> james bond <laughs> uh, uh why James Bond? <laughs> it might work. Um, but I, I also, just for songs to talk about, I did have mm-hmm. gar- the song, which I thought was by Garbage, but I mean. Yeah, the world's uh, same thing. I, I didn't know how they um, put, that's a really good song. Um, I is. also had um, this, the song Tomorrow Never Dies by uh, Cheryl Crow. Mm-hmm. It's. I was kind of surprised by it. I was like, I didn't remember it at all, and I heard. Yeah, it. I, like, I don't remember that bad. one at all. Yeah. And um, when I re- and the Tina Turner one for yes, Golden Goldeneye, Eye. I have that as well. That that's yeah, she and I totally, really belts it out on that song. Yeah, too. and I totally forgot that that was the film Tina sang the song for. I could have sworn Tina did one of the eighties, like a Roger Moore one or something, but it was. I not. thought Tina Turner did License to Kill, mm-hmm. and I thought Shirley Bassey did Golden Eye. Ah, okay. Like she probably would have been old, but yeah. I mean, it sounds Goldeneye very much feels like Diamonds Are Forever, or yeah, uh, it's very much in that Shirley Bassey style for sure, for sure. You know, you 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 realize when you look back after you get past like the first eight songs or so, they do kind of have like a rock style, rock style, rock style, then a really Bond one, and like yeah, everyone thinks like it's just now that it has that vibe. No, it's it's kind of always been like that. Yeah, even um, uh, there was uh, the man with the golden gun. That was very '60s go go style. Yeah, that's a really weird song. That was a very weird one. That was the one that caught me off guard the most. I think that or um, Moonraker. That Moonraker. Yeah, Moonraker I was, like, was another weird this? one. 
And the one and uh, Madonna's Die Another Day I, was Okay, you know what? I like that song. I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it's so catchy when you listen to it. But it's Madonna. Madonna songs are always catchy. That's true. I, you know what's funny? I was watching a video about Dick Tracy the other day. Uh, nice. By the way, she's an absolute smoke show on Dick Tracy. I just got to put that out there. Um, but she sang the song. Um, I don't know what it's called. Like the, well, she sang all the songs, but yeah, the main song, and she did a performance of it at the Oscars, and it's amazing, like friggin' amazing. And I was like, this yeah. is like I don't remember Madonna like being this kind of a singer, right? Because she's super like popish, yeah. and it's like a very James Bond style song. Um, but I mean, Die Another Day. I I I think it's it's a catchy song. It kind of goes with the movie because the movie sucks. But, yeah. Uh, but I mean, I'm very surprised they didn't they didn't really make an effort to go a different way with it. Like yeah, they, they could this have, was intentional. Yeah. They wanted a Madonna song, basically. Yeah, they didn't, and I guarantee you this wasn't like uh, oh uh, Madonna, this this is a song, write write us a song. They were like, No, this is the beat, figure it out. And she was like figure it out, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cause but, like yeah. it doesn't it doesn't feel like that era of Madonna. Or James No, Bond. because Madonna was just, uh, when that one came out, wasn't she just coming off the, was it the Frozen album or something? Yeah, I think It was like no, that very electronic. Later. Actually, yeah. no, yeah, it was. It was. And if Frozen, and that was a very, like, it had, like, American Pie, that song, or whatever it was called. Yeah. And but it was, a, it was a departure from her. Ray of Light, like, that's what it was called. Yeah, Ray of Light, l- written by Lenny Kravitz. There you go. I mean, that's actually a pretty decent album, I'm not going to lie. Like, I'm not yeah. a huge Madonna fan. But, but it was, it, but like you said, though, it was a departure for her style of music. Yeah, at least. But then that's what her music became after that. It became yeah. very dance-like influenced. Uh, then she had, yeah, music after that, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah. So... But yeah, Madonna. so Madonna. Uh, anyways, I wonder what she's up to now. <laughs> yeah, well, Madonna was great in the '90s. Like uh, yeah. she was all doing whatever the hell she wanted. Like people look at celebrities nowadays as like, oh, this person's crazy. It's like, no, you clearly never saw Michael Jackson or Madonna in the '90s. In the '90s, yeah, the guy had a monkey and a bunch of kids, and he held his baby over a railing. Yeah, like uh, a little, little crazy, a little, just a little bit, <laughs> just a smidge. Yeah, you know what I mean. Um. Yeah. But uh, Tom Jones' Thunderball, that's a great song as yeah. well. Uh, yeah. Dr. No is the actual James Bond theme song that we know when he walks out with the gun, but just dun, like four dun, minutes long. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. And then um, what's the next one? From Russia with Love, Love? is like yeah. a really strange song that has no, it has no lyrics, I'm pretty sure, unless I... Yeah, I, I'm not sure if it does either, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, I can't remember if that one has lyrics or not. But it that was a very that was a that was another one that was a little bit of a departure. Um, yeah, there was I, the Louis Armstrong one, Her Majesty's Secret Service. Yes, you which, have all the time. No, you're lagging in the world. You lagged. Here we go again. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sorry about that, guys. No, it's okay. So, but yeah, that that's I forgot about that one too until today. Yeah. So that um, one wasn't a bad one. I think a lot of the Roger Moore songs were not very good. Uh, Octopussy is a terrible song. Whoever made that, I'm sorry. Terrible song, terrible movie. Yeah, it's like, like you're not the worst Bond movie, but... Yeah. I don't know. And then, uh, I mean, it, it's good. Cause both of the both underrated Bond movies, uh, Living Daylights and License to Kill, both have, like, really good songs. And, yeah. uh, I mean... I don't really have much more on this. Do you have anything else? No, I, I think I'm done. Uh, yeah. Yeah. As I'm going through my online list here. Yeah. I don't have much more. The five songs that I mentioned are basically my top five. Yeah. A couple good songs here and there. Like I said, an RIP Chris Cornell. Yeah. I echo all of those thoughts, guys. Thank you for watching.